Hi, hi guys, you can keep your cameras on. Hi, um, it's Abel Sampson from Car Design News. So happy to be here today uh, with the Autodesk team. This is a series of um, live stream webinars we're doing with the guys um, covering different aspects of uh, Autodesk product range, um, targeting different levels of management. So before we get started, I hand you over to Phil. We just want to go through some basic uh, housekeeping. Um, if you do have a problem at any point during the webinar, there's a chat box in your dashboard. If you want to click on that and my colleagues Kat or Vanessa will jump in and help you. If it does freeze, don't worry, just switch off and switch it back on. Um, please ask any questions. We'll be holding the questions to the end and then we'll put them to the team. Uh, I'll be moderating the questions. So um, if I do get anything wrong, just reach out as well. Um, and really, if you do fall out at any point, as I said, don't panic, it's recorded as well. So I'll be on the YouTube channel for Car Design News afterwards within 24 hours. So I'm actually going to switch off my camera and um, I'm going to hand you now over to Phil. Great. Everyone see my screen okay? Abel, can you see it? We can see it, Phil. Wonderful. Okay, well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. As, as Abel said, uh, another in our um, Autodesk webinar series. This today, we're going to look at really some of the class A, class A tools we have in Alias, and also some of our migration paths and um, and, and, and trainings that we have. But I'm not going to bore you with PowerPoint. Don't worry. We've got a special two special guests on today. We've got um, uh, Barry Kimball, our our technical guru for class A, um, who's going to give you a, a live demo of some some um, alias capabilities and also Steve Coburn who you know as we were chatting earlier and I've known him for 20 odd years now um, we both had our apprenticeship in topology so um, he's going to talk about his experiences in class A and um, projects he's worked on as, as a bit of a bit of a flavor anyway anyway without further ado I shall get started our safe harvest statement I'm going to show you some um, research and some prototypes that we're working on currently um, and we're a software development house so bear that in mind when you're looking at some of the some of these products as we said we'll have three people today myself uh, Steve and Barry and um, just in case you don't know them they're there we've gone for a bit of a casual look today on the photographs the last last webinar was our super serious corporate looks but we've gone for uh, kind of a chilled uh, chill, more chilled look just a quick couple of minutes on what and some of the tools we have in Alias. Um, for a long, long time, we've been been enhancing the the, the Class A tools um, in Alias for you know for the past 10, 11, 12 releases. And from such enhancements as EDF um, file I/O to um, you know enhancements to curve on surface, offset performance enhancements, reference manager, and as we see in the latest release of Alias, aspects of assembly modeling and and, and other tools. We've also introduced um, some tools um, which you may or may not know, such as a uh, panel gap, um, ball corner um, enhancements, helix and, and, and barrel tools, and also updates to, to profile tools. So really the bread and butter tools that we need to, to build our, our, our surfaces, as well as the tools that we have currently in Alias. Um, we also have a number of um, projects on the go at the moment to look at um, aspects of our topology engine, curve and surface enhancements and, and, and the focus on class A modeling, um, obviously in reverse engineering. And also we have always on the back burner, um, uh, such tools as accelerated surfaces and global fillets and offsets and um, a gap and leveling tool. Just this week, we were having a chat about a, a theoretical, um, um, making a theoretical surface tool. Um, and of course, we're always adding more Bezier mass. We have in Alias, we have the beauty of both NURBS or Bezier and we can switch between the two um, very easily. Of course, what we've done in Alias 2021 is really um, uh, sort of update some of the key features um, in Alias to, to really move it into, a, into I think, a new direction, a new era. Um, we introduced Curve and Surface Replace, um, which is really the ability to take an input curve, replace it with a different curve and have the geometry update and rebuild automatically. So we can actually then just, um, you know, create a series of features, replace, for example, an enduring section and the geometry will uh, will uh, rebuild, not just on curves, but on surfaces. So our array tool, for example, this pattern of, of a grill, we can replace the input geometry and very quickly by replacing a different shape, um, the geometry will rebuild um, automatically as we see there. So it's some very powerful 
ways to insert, replace and rebuild geometry. And it's really phase one of, of getting into a quite sophisticated um, um, approach to alias to begin to build in intelligence and, um, and, and automation in there. And this is the overall vision which we're working towards, which is essentially our feature library. And this is the ability to save features, replace, rebuild, copy and paste, drag features. You, know, you might have heard the term power copy and paste, have that capability um, in, 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 in alias, but critically save these geometry types out and reuse them um, across our, across our um, um, extended team, our, our design team. As well as the, um, the, the process enhancements, we're also in, in, enhancing some of the supporting ancillary tools to really automate some of these um, um, funky tasks. So most of you will be aware that we have computational design capability built into Alias. The remit for this is to, to really allow us to take that, that geometry right the way through to, to um, engineering, production and, and manufacture. So it's fo a real focus on high quality surfaces. We have in prototype Dynamo Player, which allows us to play these scripts from an alias menu, so we don't need to know how to work with computational design anymore. So we can actually um, um, play it from inside alias and, and, and just move the sliders. Then we're also introducing some new capabilities such as morphing. We can morph um, a variety of shapes over a three-dimensional grill in X, Y, and Z. Um, so we can really um, um, get that fade out from the, the grill or the IP that we want. Again, driven by effectively think of um, the sort of computational design inside of Dynamo, kind of a parametric type approach. As well as the software side, we're also beginning to connect the clay. Um, obviously, we work very closely with PowerMill, our, 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 um, our, our Dellcam colleagues, and also we're looking at how we can actually just all begin to automate the surface and then mill, locally mill the surface automatically without, without having to recompile uh, the, the CNC code. For these projects, we have a number of um, interesting research projects. We have a, our live scan project, which is the ability to see the scan update in real time in Alias. In the video, we see um, a Faro scanner. It can work for GOM and other tools. We have a number of research projects into um, automatic um, um, automatic surfacing or retopology uh, uh, re of components. We see a reform project there. And we're also beginning to look at how we can improve and enhance our surface refit. Again, history based. So if we change some of the Geometry, we can actually just replace it and rebuild it, and it will update um, update automatically and very quickly. Those of you who may have seen the other end of the process, which is this neat bit of kit that Cold have got, where they can just squirt the clay on um, um, from the from the milling arm, and we, you know, we in a number of customers we have this um, working where early stage is just fed and it's milled automatically locally onto small areas, and the clay is, is squirted on uh, very quickly. In addition to the um, um, you know, the tools and surfacing, we're also connecting teams together. We enhanced um, Reference Manager in, 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 in 2020. And in the latest release, we've introduced a concept of alias assembly, similar to CAT um, product and parts. So we can actually work as a, like an, a master assembly concept and the team members can hang their geometry beneath it. It doesn't need to be alias data. It could be Maya, it could be IGIS, STEP, STL, um, parts or products so we can really begin to work together and we can see that we when, when a geometry is out of date we can update it but we can always be in, in, in ensure that we're working on the, the correct geometry um, um, in real time as well as that we're actually moving up a level um, so if you think of the assembly concept as a way to actually work as a as a, a as a team and with the, an m and alias team we're also putting a, a layer on top, which is what we call our PDM layer, which will allow us to check data or check um, alias surfaces in and out of, um, of, of companies' PDM systems. That could be you know, Inovia, Team Center, or Windchill. Um, but we're in the process of, of beginning to uh, to develop this now for our customers, so they can actually read data in, read data out, save directly into Team Center, pull in assemblies, and, and really allow or ensure that the alias data is then tagged and um, is referenced right the way through the life cycle from, from, from the concept right the way through to uh, surface release and of course engineering. This is today, right? But what are we doing for the future? What are we looking at as the future of class A and surfacing? Some of you who, you know, who maybe we've visited in, in the past year are aware that we've been beginning to integrate machine learning into alias. So this is, you know, science, not science fiction, this is science fact. Um, and one project is is CFD. I, I know one of my ex colleagues is on this call, and we did something a few years ago, um, um, CD Dapco, about having real time CFD. And we've begun to implement this, but with a machine learning algorithm where we taught the CFD algorithm um, what the airflow was around 800 cars, 
and then we have integrated that into into alias so when you move the cvs on, on this tank on, on on the top of the car this, the airflow updates in real time because it predicts what the airflow is doing based upon um based upon um, um the learnings of this algorithm done. and this really has been instructive for us because it shows two things it shows that we can we can actually teach software to learn and, and, and to predict, but also shows that we can integrate it into Alias and there's a business benefit for our customers. So we're now moving to the next stage, which is really investigating automated tools and design language capture for OEM. So we can begin to begin to understand the nature of surfacing, begin to understand what makes patch planning, begin to bake in manufacturing and feasibility into our models. And as we've seen, begin to not just um, um, evolve the CAS data into Class A data, but to begin to rebuild it automatically and to create what we call feature and design language templates. So if I'm working on a particular model line or a particular car or a particular project, Alias will guide me and will tell me or, um, or, or give me bits of geometry that I can use and I can just replace and I can rebuild it. This takes us into an exciting project that we're, that we're working on with um, a number of OEMs at the moment, which is really the automatic approach to, to, to class A surfacing. It won't actually be a one button make car, but in certain areas where we understand the nature of, 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 of patch planning and we can put the big slabs in, Alias will be able to help us and guide us. We'll still have to do some detail work and, and some of the intricate manufacturing feasibility, but we're in the early stages of being able to automatically drop big um, patch plan to a um, a surface language of an OEM onto onto a onto a, um, a scan data automatically, which is pretty cool. So technology aside, what are we doing really from a training perspective and from a migration perspective? Well, I literally had hundreds of um, requests on LinkedIn and emails for this. We actually have a whole series of, of collateral for people to to um, um, to learn um, class A alias, and you know you can do it at your own leisure. We have a five day course. And the website is, is is at the bottom there. As Abel said, this video will be online, so you can look at this at your leisure. Um, and this is really takes you through a series of, of tutorials and exercises on how to model certain components. Barry, who you'll see in a few minutes, is narrating all of these videos. So this is a, a, a pretty neat five day um, five day course, free of charge for you to use. We also have created a series of bespoke classes for our customers and courses. You know, whether it be migrating NX users or tier ISOM users or ISOM surf users, you know, we work very closely with, with OEMs around the world to create the, the bespoke material um, specific to the workflow and specific to the needs of, 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 of that company. What I can announce today, with, um, which is really good news, is that we'll be updating our um, ISOM Surf to Alias conversion course. We're working with Calidat, um, 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 a company in Germany with a long experience of working with Surf. Um, you guys will, 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 will know Werner and, and his team very well. So we're creating a brand new course available in a few weeks' time. Well, don't panic, Werner. Don't worry. We know when it's coming. But available really for you to actually download and to use. Again, a free course over a um, over um, um, five days for you to, to use. So we're going to create the collateral, the material. Um, it'll be online and it'll be um, self-paced, so you can just dip into it if you want to. And we'll also be looking to print a book as well. We know a lot of people, the first thing they will do, will print out the PDF. So we'll be shipping a book with that. And of course, like with all of our courses, it's free for anyone to learn, to dive into, and to begin to, to explore Alias um, from the class take perspective. Um, that's Mr. Um, we also have a series of deep dives. There's Barry, you'll be seeing him in a moment with his COVID hair. He's had his haircut, so you'll see a <laughs> much um, shorter haircut. We also have a series of deep dives which you can access through our YouTube channel. So if you're interested in, in more information on about, um, for example, how Reference Manager works, you, you can access those components there. Of course, as well as the training, um, we're also working quite closely with multiple customers beginning to understand the nature of Class A and how we can migrate them to a, a single platform and a, and a unified pipeline. So we're really discovering some interesting components and some themes that are really resonating a, a, a across all our customers at the moment. How can we actually encourage communication between departments? How can we really um, have process improvements? How can we begin to automate aspects? And critically, how can we make our um, resources more agile? How can we you know, use um, teams for peaks of concept work or other bits of the team for peaks of, um, of, of, of more class A work if we want to do that? 
across the world. We've been engaging very closely with multiple customers. Um, so we can actually really understand their requirements. We're in the middle of coding specific enhancements for certain customers. Um, we kind of embed our PM team quite closely with, with product management team and development team closely with customers to understand their needs and requirements and really drive those unique features to enhance and build upon Alias. As I said at the beginning, you know, you can either do training by yourself with Alias with our free um, tutorials, or you can actually, you know, we can come in, we can visit and we can create a migration path for you um, 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 as you move or as you train. One particular engagement, we're working closely again with partners in, in, in territory, both Linkage, one of our um, um, great um, uh, American bars in North America, is providing um, expert class A resource to, to, to go on site, and Tuium, which is a local VAR to provide translation service, services. Sorry. And we run a very simple approach. We have a series of workshops. We understand the nature of the problem. We identify areas and work out how we can um, improve processes. We have a series of trainings. And then we go to a proof of concept and deployment. So as we said, those are really the main, um, um, the main areas that we can actually begin to um, uh, drill down on, really from um, learning class A self-help tutorials right the way through to moving your team and your projects from, um, from the current software uh, mm -hmm. to Alias and, and really reaping the benefits of those process improvements and single pipeline for your concept to um, surface release. Anyway, enough of me. I shall now hand over to the first of our guest speakers, Barry, who's going to talk about Class A and then show some live um, live tools and Alias, but I, I won't bore you with uh, my spiel. I'll hand, it, I'll hand over to Barry right now. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. Welcome. Okay, so I'd like to start, uh, welcome everyone. I'd like to start with um, just a bit of uh, what, I, what I believe Class A is and 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 maybe uh what what it's not um so i i've i've shown this before so apologies if you've had to sit through it but um a lot of people believe that the class a surfacing is all uh based around making these really smooth big flowing nice surfaces that probably look something like this in your mind when you think about class a surfacing but what i, I i'd like to reinforce again that that's actually not the hard work when, 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 when you're doing this work, there's a few guys, it's big slabs, it's really, really um, nice, and I don't want to say easy, but not that complicated. When you start to move, and that's about 30% of the work, the real work of Class A surfacing. So when someone says, yeah, I made I made five or six surfaces on the hood, they're not, they're not Class A, they might be. If there's no engineering criteria baked into it, it isn't a Class A surface. Fundamentally, I believe that Class A surfacing means it meets the design requirements and more importantly, at the same time, meets the engineering requirements, which are going to be all of these fit and finish things where all of these pieces fit together. What does the customer see and how does he perceive it? So I, I, I say this almost every time I do a Class A uh, presentation that it's not about the big flowing surfaces. Those, those are academic. It's really about the fit and the finish and making it a perfect part, okay? And what, what maybe to expand on that, let's say you wanted to make a taillight for, for something like this, okay? If you're working in the studio, and I'm just going to zoom in on this picture, if we're working in the studio and you're doing just the studio model, maybe you're a cast modeler, and it, and it varies from place to place, but your, your interface between the quarter panel here and the lens of the lamp might be here. And all you do is have a, a, an offset, you've got a couple of flanges, maybe you offset for a blackout around there, 10 millimeters, call it good. This is a little more in-depth look at what that actually has to be to be a Class A surface. Now this surface right here can be identical to this one. This surface can be identical to this one, but you can see the elaborate difference between how these two things are laid out. This quarter panel has draft of five degrees. It's got a dipole. It's got a certain flange length. It's got a specific offset. And then you have the blackout is actually underneath the lens. So there needs to be an offset there. The lens itself has its own die draw that's separate from the quarter panel that has to be factored in. So in reality, this is not what your gap looks like. Your gap looks like this. And your blackout doesn't look like this from the customer's perspective from the rear of the car. It's actually quite a bit lower once you bake in all this criteria. So really important points, I think, to understand that the difference between smooth, 
G3 surfaces being class A versus those same G3 surfaces having all of the engineering criteria baked into the flan baked into the edges, the flanges, the perimeter, the crown of the surfaces have to meet certain requirements, flush, under flush conditions. That's what makes a class A surface. And I, I just really wanted to drive that point home. So that's it for my, my PowerPoint. I'd like to show a couple of, of, of things that we've added here um, in, in 2021 that are, that are uh, uh, some pretty new unique features of our surface fillet tool. So this, let's just say here, this was a um, maybe some kind of uh, HVAC controls and maybe this is a, a vent or a, I don't know, a radio face. It, it doesn't really matter what, it, what we call it. Um, but the, the key here is when you start to put in all of this criteria, for instance, a minimum radius and a minimum radius, right? These might be two millimeter radii. And a lot of people um, would look at this and say, well, two mil radius, maybe it's okay to have these hard, harsh um, uh, breaks in continuity because it's just a two millimeter radius. Well, I believe that designs and, and, and companies are in really high competition for people's money, basically. And, and the more subtleties, when people look at these kinds of things, when they're curvature continuous versus just tangent, people people don't know what they see, but they know it looks better, right? You see this in product design, you see this in, in all kinds of uh, automobile designs. Um, and what we've done in the latest version, if you if, if I zoom in here and look, on, on this side here, we have a, a radius G1, two millimeters, right? Now, if I did the same thing, and I wanted to have that be curvature continuous, those tangent lines are gonna get backed off quite a ways, right? Because I need now to have this surface to have a nice lead in curvature comb, I need to have G2 curvature. And to get that comb length, we need a nice form factor. And what ends up happening inevitably is that I have to move these two features apart or somehow compromise the continuity between these two fillets, okay? That starts to make, and, and also I, I'd like to illustrate that that also, when you start to have these large radii it start or, or soft radii, it starts to make this part gap actually appear bigger than it actually is because we're forcing the tangent lines apart and your eye picks up tangent lines. It doesn't really know how to visualize a radius value. It knows from experience, but it really notices where the main slab changes and varies and becomes an arc. Okay. So, in that in that um, context, if we look here at, at a new feature that we've put in in 2021, and actually, I'll show I'm showing 2021.1 update one that was recently released. Um, we've added the ability to create a section called G2 curvature arc. And what does the G2 curvature arc really mean? Well, what that means is we can get G2 continuity, not G3, but G2 continuity. It's going to appear almost like G3. But if I grab these surfaces and I turn a curvature comb on, you can see the shape of this curvature comb. I will grab this one, turn it on at the same time, and I'm just going to adjust my scale down a little bit. Okay. Now, there's the difference between a G2 curvature and the G2 arc curvature. We get a lot better match of G3 right here at this point. You can see here, you know that that's going to hit a, hit a little angle right there and start peaking. What we get here is a nice almost G3 lead in. And then we get the main, we maintain a constant section through the middle. So this is, this isn't a two millimeter at one apex point. This is two millimeter across a range of the fillet. That's going to make it not seem as lazy or doughy, right? Each studio has its own, its own term for some of these kinds of things. And if we, if we actually look at the continuity here, I'll just uh, delete, uh, uh, get rid of these locators really quick. Um, if we look at the continuity here between what does what does this G2 arc, if I look at this and you see this G2 arc right here, that is a pretty pure transition on either side of that. And it's gonna appear like a nice tight gap because we have very small fillets. If we come over here to this side, we have the same thing. We have nice lead in, but if you look at how much longer the lead in is, this side is just gonna appear to be a little lazier, be a little, 
softer, okay? So some designs might wanna have that crisp, tight look. Well, you can use G2 Arc. If you wanna have a longer lead-in, I'd say use G2 Curvature, okay? And the other thing that's gonna get you, get you into here is that you can now start to compress the, the distance between this feature and this feature because we're not bound by this long lead-in that makes these two overlap, we've still got quite a bit of distance in between here. So we could actually sneak those a little closer if on the back side of material here, we had enough room for tooling. But what we did in the latest version though, if you've had 2021.0, in 2021.0, when you turned Bezier on, this surface was multi-spanned. So it was degree five with three spans. In 2021.1, we changed that and implemented the fact that it is going to make you three Bezier degree five surfaces. So if it's a consideration of yours that you really want to have Bezier and that's that's you know that's really beneficial for you, click the Bezier mode and and you'll be in business. If you turn the Bezier mode off and let this recalculate, and it's going around doing quite a few things. And now we have a single degree five surface with three spans. In reality, it's identical because there is no difference between, oops, there is no difference between splitting this at the at the span location. So 2021.1 um, again offers us, us the ability to make those Bezier. And I'm gonna speed this along a little bit because I want, I know Steve's got some, some good stuff to show. So uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, this profile blend and, and this might, this might come into or, or, or speak to Phil's, uh, Phil's mentioning of a, a feature library. And this is where that, that kind of uh, concept might be used. But just from a technical perspective, if, if we were doing the class A surfacing of, of this guy and we looked at this in the front view, if this is the glass surface, right, and there's a molding that runs along here, this angle from the glass surface normal to the flange opening has to be a specific number. But as most people know that if you've been in this class A business long enough, the distance from the glass to the actual A surface is not consistent. So I can't make, I need to make a draft or flange based on the normal of this surface that touches this class A line. And that to construct that by hand is, is, is really technically not possible. You could fake it, you could sweep it, you could keep checking angles, but you're never going to make it pure okay you're never going to make it perfect so if i just turn this section off really quick and here's our here's our out our, our outer surface our header and maybe that's our glass surface that sits underneath and you can see there that we we pull off at the a pillar typical of, of many many cars a couple of settings that i I'd, I'd point your attention to here too and one is and i'm just going to switch this we're doing normal right now i'm going to make this five degrees I'll um, use the chain select here and just grab this edge. And I've got the flange from a curve. So we're going from this curve. And if I don't have that check mark on, I don't see these two options. So I'm gonna make a flange from a curve, but I wanna go to a surface. So if I pick this surface and hit the go button, that has just made, oops, let me undo that really quick. Turn this chain, up, turn this off. We've got an extra thing in the background there, sorry. I'll grab these guys pick this surface, tell it to go, and there's our flange. That flange right there is now built five degrees to this surface, but it hits that line. Technically speaking, that is class A surfacing now because now we've put some engineering criteria into there. Next thing we would do is zoom in here, add our radii, and we'd be good to go. And, and we could do a quick check here. If we just do a, a curve, oops, a projection onto this surface, and I'm just gonna add this guy in here and we do a G2 check, 85 degrees, um, uh, Corey edit, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, we can, we can hit some other points along here, turn my shading off, and we can look at any of these points along here and, um, and you can see what the, uh, what the value is at any of those, at any of those points, so 85, 84.997, so the angle between the glass and that flange is five degrees, which is what we wanted to specify. Um, and the next thing I'd like to, to, to move on to a little bit is, 
I'm sorry, back to that really quick. Imagine, so if we if we go to our history visualizer right now, we can see that we have a stack up of features, right? So we've got we've got a a set of curves, we've got a, a offsets and some uh, drafts that we've made. Imagine that down here at the bottom, and I'm saying imagine safe harbor statement, don't make any purchases based on this right now, but imagine that there that you could you could access somehow this section information and apply it to this set of data by simply picking a curve and a surface. The software already had a library with the fact that it's five degrees and it's two surface, so on and so forth. So when we talk about future development, that's something that we're looking to improve upon as we move forward here, as Phil mentioned. Okay, um, on to the last uh, quick guy here, another kind of, of, of method to build up something that has that has engineering criteria. If we have a couple of surfaces in space, and maybe this is a IP and this is a door panel, I'm making it up, it doesn't really matter. It's two parts that come together and where those two parts come together, they need to have some specific criteria on offsets, flange lengths and radius values and angles here, 10 degrees. How can I build that up? Once again, uh, history-based things that we can use here. I'm gonna use my um, offset tool. This guy right here, I know from my section, I want this line to be a three millimeter offset. So I'm just gonna put that in here. I got a three millimeter offset. This guy says that the flange length from tangent to end wants to be 27. Well, I can't simply offset that surface to get 27. So here's what I would do. I'm going to grab this surface, I'm gonna offset it down. I'm gonna go, a little more, maybe 30, okay? Now I know that the line that I want right here is an intersection between those two surfaces. That's gonna produce this line, okay? So I will do a surface intersect between this little gentleman here and his friend. And then I'm gonna use that similar command, multi-surface draft, and I'm gonna draft from this edge, accept it, up to this surface, accept it. Now my angle is going the wrong way, so I'll flip that angle and I need 10, so I'm going to put 10 in there, okay? And now that I've got that done, I need a 10 millimeter pure radius, so I'm going to come over here and do a surface fillet between these two guys and I'll put 10 in here. Oops, I need uh, G1 because that's all we're working to right now, 10. It could be curvature, it doesn't really matter, it's just the tangent line placement. And then I'm going to use a locator here to measure the deviation between this edge and the tangent line. And I see that that's 22 millimeters. Okay, so now I'm gonna come down here and use my history and I'm gonna update this thing and maybe I'm gonna say 35 millimeters. Oops, query edit this guy, change him to 35, tab. And it's 27.1 millimeters. Okay, that's a little too far. Maybe I go 34.5. 26 point, okay, I'm gonna go 34.45. And I'm gonna try to find the number, and this always, this isn't always the, the easiest work that there needs to be, that there that there is in the world, but this is, if you're if you're that interested, this is kind of class A surfacing. Um, you've gotta find this happy medium of engineering criteria and maintaining your design, and now I'm at 27 millimeters and I meet the engineering criteria. So again, that could now, in, in, in a, in a in a future world, that might be able to apply by picking a different top surface and a different plane. Now I can replace those features by clicking right here. I've got to replace, and I could replace those with updated surfaces from other users and uh, and continue my work and keep maintaining this continuity. But uh, I know it was pretty quick. I, 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 I want to give everybody a chance here. So uh, that's all I have for right now. And just to uh, finish up, Class A surfacing is more about baking in engineering criteria than making five or six surfaces G3 continuous. So thanks for uh, paying attention to that. Um, and I'll, I'll hand it over to Stephen. Thanks, Barry. No problem. Okay. I'm just gonna try and share this PowerPoint. I think we, we can, we see, can see, see, see I think it's, you see the PowerPoint? Yeah. There we go. 
So uh, yeah, my, my name is Stephen Cobert and I've run a company called Geodyne and I've been involved in servicing for many years. I thought um, what I would do is just go through my story of, of how I've got to doing what I'm doing. Um, starting off with my education, which is a long time ago. And um, I actually started in the art side of things. So I did a fine art, I started a fine art degree. And whereas most people drop out of engineering and go into art, I did it the other way around. I dropped out of fine arts and took up aeronautical engineering instead, which is probably seems quite a bizarre thing to do, but it's sort of, because surfacing is that space between art and engineering, I think that's where I was naturally going to end up. I just didn't realize it at the time. So my first uh, job was in British aerospace and I got interested there in um, surfacing because I was doing research into aerodynamics but we didn't have a CAD system, unbelievably, in our department. So I ended up actually writing a polygonal modeler of sorts and a grid generator so that we could actually carry out our CFD analysis where we needed a grid that covered the entire surface of the aircraft. So this interest in geometry, I realized that geometry is key to all engineering. Without geometry, we can do no in engineering or meaningful engineering. So I then moved to Rover Group. Um, and I was taken on there to look at a system which was developed by Computer Vision, which was NURBS-based. Uh, I'd never been involved in surfacing before. They just wanted somebody with fresh eyes to have a look at this system. They, they already had a Bezier system, which was called ASD. And you can see some of the results on the right-hand side. The typical patch plan that was developed in ASD looks something like that one at the bottom. And the, the NURBS equivalent was the one at the top, admittedly with not all of the detail added. But it enabled you to create some very um, simple and nice, the continuous surfaces, as you can see through that uh, curvature display in the middle. Unfortunately for my career at Rover, IsomSurf came along and computer vision was pretty dead at that point. But on the plus side, I did learn IsomSurf and I also got trained in ALIAS. And I just found one of my certificates, which is from 1990, an historic document. Um, after Rover, I moved to Topologies, and Topologies was uh, the UK reseller of IsomSurf at the time. And there I was an application support engineer on IsomSurf and IsomCFD, which was a grid generator. I ended up training any number of of users from different companies around the UK and elsewhere. Uh, for the final two years, I was placed in Ford in the UK and then in Germany as well, um, supporting their permanent staff and their contractors as well. So in 1991, I decided to set up my own company, which is called Geodyme. And first of all, I started off doing ice and surf surfacing, but also training and mentoring and later on moved into Alias as well. So I've always kept the two going over the last 20 years or so. And we dealt with A-Class, we dealt with CAS, reverse engineering. And in recent years, I've developed this product called Surf Plus, which was purely for ice and surf users. It won't mean anything to anybody else, but if you're an ice and surf user, it might be of interest. And it's now freely available on the learnisom.com site. But that actually provides some additional tools into IsomSurf in terms of efficiency. So it gives you hotkeys where there were no hotkeys and makes it much more efficient to work with. Now, these are some of the companies we've worked with over the years, either directly or indirectly. So from the largest companies to the smallest companies. So I've worked in OEMs on exterior, interior, basically any, any part of the car really in terms of surfacing from A-Class and CAS, uh, bespoke low volume vehicles, all sorts of other products there, as well as continuing training and mentoring people. And these are some of the projects uh, that, that we've worked on. Um, so we've you know, included air, things like aircraft interiors and things that are outside of automotive as much as inside automotive, and varying from projects where we've had plenty of time to do things, to projects where we've had virtually no time whatsoever to do things. Uh, this is one of the most prestigious vehicles that we've we've worked on. 
and we were lucky enough to actually pick up um, Barry Kimball's alias model and we then worked on it as an ISIMSERV model um, bringing it up to an A-class standard but we would it was the first time I'd ever seen an, an alias model that was really high quality and it was at that point I thought actually A-class can be done by alias it was quite clear from that um, we we worked on taking Barry's services, pretty much kept the patch plan as it was with some changes, but every single surface on that car, as Barry explained, A-class is not just about the highlights, it is about meeting engineering criteria. And so every single surface on that, on that vehicle was changed in order to meet every single detailed piece of engineering that we were given. The, the good thing about that project that we managed to get it done in three months um, from start to, to finish to the release point was that it was surface led. So we the all the surfaces that we created once a week or even more frequently than that, they would mill directly from our surfaces onto the clay. So the clay wasn't manually created. It was always milled. And so at every, every point along the process, designers could see a physical representation of what was on the screen. So it wasn't just a case of looking at the screen and deciding whether that was good enough. They could actually see it in physical reality. Another very interesting project for me was this Modec electric van, which was at the other end of the scale, if you like. It was a very small team, very, very low budget, but way ahead of its time. Um, it was an electric van, purely electric van, had a 150 mile range um, unladen and a 50 mile an hour top speed and it was, it was very nippy. And uh, having had a test drive in it, I can certainly vouch for that. It accelerated very, very well indeed. Uh, we developed that van as a team. That this is including all the engineering going straight from, going from a concept um, level where we didn't even know how many doors it was gonna have, right through to a production vehicle in a year. And that was including doing the e-Mercury prototype, as you can see at the bottom. And it's, we, again, it's a digital process. So we started off from a, our starting point was that the sketch. Uh, we developed the AADIS surfaces, the exterior and interior. I had one guy working on the interior and I did the exterior. And we had one opportunity to mill a foam. That was it. There was no other physical model. So once the surfaces had been signed off on the screen and we used to do a regular review on a simple projection system. Once those were, those were signed off um, digitally, then the foam was milled. There were a few changes that we needed to do, but all of those were just baked back into the surface model. There was no more milling other than for the final tools. And then we produced the uh, production vehicle, as you can see on the right there with the FedEx um, logo on the side. Unfortunately, the, the company uh, went under in 2011 which is rather sad. So Alias for A-class surfacing, obviously that was an example of one of the projects that we did that was A-class, but it makes it seems to make a lot of sense that we've got, um, Alias is very well established in the CAS arena in automotive, and it would make a lot of sense to continue using that model into the A-class arena, um, using the same sort of methodologies so I think it's it's quite important that in in CAS there should be more and more um, the patch planning that is appropriate for when we get to the A-class level. So that the surfaces don't get thrown away; they just get reused and and refined, and we then can bake in the engineering into those surfaces. So in terms of the tool set of Alias, it's got more than enough modelling and analysis tools. That's been well proven over the years for A-class surfacing and it's it's a fully fledged NURBS package it's it's actually fully supports NURBS and NURBS can be used um, beneficially in A-class surfacing some people choose not to use NURBS that's absolutely fine that's one of the flexibilities of ABS the other thing is that because of the history as Barry was demonstrating some examples of that the history means it's incredibly powerful and the history is a is a really easy to use history. It's not doesn't get in the way. Sometimes you get to the point where you need to delete the history and move on, and freeze the freeze the model. But 
uh, it, it's just incredibly useful in developing um, some of these engineering A-class services. The other thing is that in the past, we used to do a half model and then mirrors across the center line. And that would either result in a sort of gull wing effect or a peak in the surfaces in the middle. But with, with ALIS, because of the symmetry um, functionality that you can apply symmetry to a surface and it will maintain it, then it makes that continuity across the center line is, is a given. Um, and finally, the user interface is incredibly flexible and can be tailored exactly to the needs of the user or to the process that they're going through. The alias surface is what you need as a minimum to, to do A-class surfacing. And unlike some other packages, it includes a lot of the things that would otherwise be missing, like you've got mesh, mesh tools, what alias calls mesh, which is all to do with scan data, pedestrian occupant um, impact, so head impact, things like that, the high quality rendering um, capability, the ability to do global changes with things like lattice rig, and, and as, Barry's mentioned, um, and Phil, Dynamo, the uh, computational design aspect. So all included in that, in that package. The, the other side to this is that it's all very well having a, a great system that can do surfacing in theory, but without a good user base, that it's, it's pointless that we need good users to be able to produce these A-class surfaces. And to that end, I've recently set up a the Learn Surfacing website where I'm, I'm teaching Alias and later on Isosurf to an industry standard so that people can get from, the, from a step-by-step -step approach, learn some um, good techniques that will enable them to basically surface anything in the future and finally get a career um, down this route. Um, so it consists of online tutorials, which they can follow, um, assignments which they can then um, work through and deliver any of the those models to to myself and I will review them and give them feedback on those and also mentoring so if they get stuck on anything or they've got questions then I can answer those plus if they've got particular projects that they want to complete and they want to know how to go about that then I'm more than happy to help them with that so just to give you a flavor of what that looks like. I'm now going to try and share a video, which is very quick, but takes a little time to load up. Okay, that's that's me done. So I'm not sure. Can I? Do I have to pass control back to somebody? Or I think I might be. I should be having control now. I think. Um, I guess so. Am I can share my screen, Abel? Or? Yeah, we can. Uh, can we give the screen sharing back to Phil, please, Kat? Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, well, great, Steve. Many thanks for that. That's um, yeah, really, really inspiring, and and I really would encourage people to um, to go to Steve's website. I mean, we've, we've kind of uh, worked, helped him work work with him on, on this also. Some really great lessons, and, and as Steve rightly points out, learning the art of surfacing, regardless of the package, is um, is something that, that that will stand you in good stead for your for your whole career, and whether it be surf or alias. It's it's um, you know it's, it's a great set of skills to have and learn. So I'd really encourage people to do that. And also some great anecdotes from Steve. Yeah, Barry and Steve probably the first time they've met maybe <laughs> since the GT40 project. So <laughs> yeah, history bygone days. Yeah, anyway, it, was so long, it, was, it was a long time ago, but I remember going over and meeting those guys. It was fun. It was cool. Nice to see you, Steve. I, I mean, it was so long ago, you know. It was too, I don't remember. We looked over your shoulder and marvelled at what you were doing in Alias at the time not knowing what we were looking at. But. Yeah, it was fun. I think I, I, I think I was in the Detroit office at the time. 
Um, and you, I think you phoned me up for a, an interface or something, Steve. You needed IGIS or something, and we cut you a license. I seem to recall I was doing stuff in Detroit also, so all three of us were in, were in the Detroit area um, at a similar time, which is uh, quite bizarre. Anyway, but I am conscious of the fact that we need, we need to have some, some questions and answers. So just a quick summary and, 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 and wrap up, really. You know, from, a, from an alias perspective, you know, we've, we've seen what we can do in Class A and, 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 and from Barry and the capabilities and also the, um, you know, the references from Steve and, and everything. But we're also beginning to, as we said before, in, in enhance alias. So it goes beyond servicing. So we can actually get into um, service release engineering. So we can really work and survive in this P PDM, PLM environment with, um, you know, checking data in and out and our assembly concept. So we're really getting a little bit more serious in, on, on the supporting tools. We're beginning to investigate um, the nature of design language. As Barry said, you know, if we can save these features and we can copy and paste them, reuse them, have a set of standards that we can use in alias and rebuild the geometry automatically, um, that's really one benefit of it. But the other benefit is, is potentially beginning to understand and automate processes that are manually, are manual, sorry, but we can actually begin to, to, to automate some of these processes. We see that with Dynamo and Alias, and we're beginning to look at areas of geometry from sketches, but also uh, machine learning surfacing. And of course, we have a raft of training materials. We, you know, we have Steve's uh, material, and if you want to learn Class A surfacing, you can actually go to the website today and, and, and begin to get to grips with it. You can get Alias on a 30-day trial, so you can be up to, up to speed quite quickly, and we can look to extend that should you need to do that. If you are, of course, um, maybe an ISM Surf user, we will have a um, an ISM Surf um, uh, conversion course soon. So we will have an, an up-to-date version, taking you know, the current features of ISM and, and, and showing you how to use it in model um, in Alias, also, and also managing you across um, the user interface. All, again, all these are free to use to trial your own your own your own leisure. But if you're into more of a, a, a sort of a holistic, you know, process change, and you really want to maybe move your whole team or your projects across, we're also engaged in a number of a number of OEMs, a lot of OEMs actually, about moving them from a current tool to a, a, a an alias class A tool. So they have that that single pipeline of Steve and, and, and Barry mentioned. So we're not throwing away data, we're reusing data and we're actually beginning to actually add manufacturing fees earlier in the process so we can actually ensure that we, we carry on working and, and, and using that data on the single pipeline and can basically have more time to, to design and, and, and refine the geometry. Um, just leaves me to say a big thank you to um, to everyone for, for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it, but also to our special guests, Barry um, and Steve, for their excellent demos, probably far superior than my PowerPoint. Um, thank you very much, guys, for taking time out and, 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 and contributing to this. And without further ado, any questions and answers, Abel? Do we have any, any, any out there? Yeah, I think I'd like to say um, I didn't realise that Barry was such a rock star. Um, in the world of uh, A-surfacing. Um, I think Steve and a few of the audience have actually said, go Barry, you're so cool. Um, I didn't realize, Barry, you had a little fan base going on, um, rechanging the world. Um, but uh, totally. it's great. <laughs> But on, on, on a serious note, though, Abel, you know, if you look at Barry and Steve, recognised world experts in, in their class, and these are the sort of guys that we're pulling into our customers as we move them from other products to Alias on, on, on the Class A journey. So, you know, it's not just the tools and the capability; it's these rock stars, these legends that we're that we're working with to move to transition our customers to that single Class A pipeline, single pipeline. Yeah, and I do, um, there's a, a, a real focus and it was a continuation with um, what you said, Phil, and what Steve said about the training, about the investment, about um, nurturing. I love the word you used, agile. I think it's a great word, being agile and the requirements of each individual, you migration or putting paths together. I think it's a great way of looking at it because um, I was, we were talking about from an educational point of view, people learn in very different ways and digest information in very different ways. So giving people the options is a very progressive way of doing it. Um, we've actually got um, um, a question. Will machine learning kill the surface modeling job industry? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. I mean, we, we talk about this machine learning as, as this um, 
it's not this it's just like Terminator Skynet thing. It's not. It's just a tool. It's like it'll be like Alias or it'll be like Photoshop. It'll be a tool that help us in our in our day to day job. So it, it's not going to kill surfacing. In fact, it'll probably paradoxically it'll make us um, more productive surfacing and might even rejuvenate um, the clays, right? Because if we can actually you know automatically surface it in an Alias and mill it like overnight, then we'll have more clays and more physical properties. So absolutely not it's not going to kill surfacing it's going to make surfacing um, even bigger absolutely okay and uh, another question will you be able to link to 3d experience we're we're working with a number of um customers and and what we're looking to do with our api is expand it so we can connect into platforms of choice that customers may use 3d experience being one Windchill being another, and of course, Team Center. So we're working closely with a number of OEMs in their IT infrastructure um, um, people uh, to see how that would work and what we need to, to do to make it work. So absolutely, it is on our, our roadmap and plan to, to, to link into uh, customers that have taken um, um, 3D experience. Um, we've got one also on, are, are there any tutorials on machine learning surfacing in Alias? No, not not yet. And what we have is, you know, from a from a kind of a prototype perspective, we actually have um, um, a number of prototypes, alias CFD, which some customers who may be on this call have seen and have played with. Um, we're in the middle of doing some early prototypes for um, um, for machine learning automatic surfacing, um, and when those are available, we 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 can actually share those with people so they can actually begin to understand. What's involved in capturing the data? For example, with one particular company, we have taken about 100 data sets, so a, a mixture of Katia ISA, ISA, and Surf and Alias data sets, and we're actually teaching the algorithm to learn certain areas, for example, the front fender. Uh, and so we're, te we're teaching what the patch planning is. So there's a methodology to teach um, the understanding of design language. Um, but the great thing is, um, it, 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 it's um, it's it's kind of vendor neutral, but it's surfacing pure, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's a Katir item patch plan, item surf alias or NX, you know, the same, the math is the math is the maths, and, and we're teaching the algorithm to understand what, what, what it looks at and then apply that and building the geometry in in in, in Alias. Uh, Tebis also, we're looking at, at, at um, Tebis geometry currently. Yeah, so we've got um, a couple more questions, um, and this one of them is so long, um, I kind of need, my screen can't even handle it. So we're going to send it to you guys afterwards. It's a yeah. that bit deep. Um, but what I thought is, there's, there's one thing I like to do, and it's, it, it's something that I can, I want to ask the same question to all three of you. So if there was three takeaways from today that you would like to impart to our audience, um, in summary, what would they be? Can I start with Barry first? Because we should start with the rock star and get him out of the way. Um, and uh, Barry, there's three takeaways. I saw a few things I thought were super cool, and some things you said were super cool in regards to that. You know, this is this is real. This is real as surfacing. But can you give us three takeaways from your presentation? Um, yeah, I guess the, the first one, and I, I I did reinforce it quite a bit, is is I see it on forums, and I see people, I hear people talking about it about what class A surfacing is. And I just, I, I would like to just reinforce that it's not about the the, the, the pure body surfaces because very few people make those. It's all about the interface between parts, how the customer is going to perceive that and does it meet engineering criteria. That, that's one of the, that's the biggest takeaway I, I would say. Um, next, next takeaway I would say um, is embrace the history. It can help you, and just like Steve said, at some point, don't worry about killing it. We actually have made metadata on this data. So even if you kill the history, you can still repopulate it because we have metadata. So use the metadata to your advantage, or you use the history to your advantage, but don't worry about deleting it. Just be flexible. It's, 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 uh, it's not an engineering exercise. It's, um, it's an exercise in design. Um, and, and the last point might be, um if you do get if, if you do feel that you get that you want to be in the class a surface surfacing field understand that probably your biggest role is to protect the design you're on the design team you're incorporating engineering criteria but your real role is to make that design not change 
or not appear to change, but still bake in all that engineering criteria. That's what separates a really good class A person from a person who just takes engineering criteria and destroys a good looking model. That's the, that's the three biggest things. Thanks. Yeah. Steve, can I ask you um, the same question? Sure, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think the first takeaway really is that, you know, alias can do a class surfing. And because, I, I mean, it is a known fact, um, but in the probably 20 years ago, that wasn't well known. Um, because in my experience, you know, we used to, I was working at Ford at the time, and we'd get alias services from the, the concept area that we'd, we'd just cut sections through and chuck the services in the bin, because they were, they were that bad, most of them. And then one day somebody produced some good ones, and we would, we'd always crowd around this machine to see, see these good alias services. And then as I said, you know, when we saw what Barry had done on Ford GT, we were, Quite astonished and an alias can clearly do a class that's that's without sh any shadow of a doubt um and as barry said you know use the history to your benefit to your advantage but i'd also say you use nerves to your advantage um that you know there are there are areas where if you use nerves in the right way it can be incredibly beneficial because it gives you it gives you guaranteed continuity over a huge area potentially but um that doesn't mean that you use your nerves everywhere. You know, there's areas where Bezier is more appropriate. Um, and the third thing I would say is um, that, as well as the software, the user is the most important thing. That without the user there who's educated into, in the right way of doing surfing, then the, the best system in the world um, will achieve nothing. It's not as ADS is not a system where you just press buttons and out comes a result. You, you really need to know what you're doing. And that, that's the time scale that that can take to learn is, is measured in years, not in days. Okay, thanks, Steve. And Phil, can you bring us home? Um, yeah, and finish your my, three, my, my three topics. Well, I've just got one big topic, I think, Abel, um, because I won't bore people with my, my training mantra, but timing is everything, right? I've completely forgotten about Modec. Um, um, which is a great story. If you look at what the Rival and Rivian are doing now with their electric vans and, and, and the, the UPS and FedEx and everyone, um, and, and Modec was, was there 10 years ago, um, but it was, it was, you know, I'm not saying Sinclair C5 also, but, um, you know, these kind of early pioneers of, of electric transport, timing is critical. Um, yeah, and, and just another big thank you to Steve and Barry for some from you know, outstanding presentations and the user is key. Understanding surfacing, regardless of whether it be surf or alias, the users are the, the key differentiator. So I'd like to thank uh, Phil, Steve and Barry for a fascinating hour. Um, I think they covered a lot within that and they came in at completely different angles, which are really good. So you guys are at the ground of doing this. Please hit the links, take advantage of the tutorials, digest it how you want to digest it. And also, if you missed anything today, you can watch it on the recording. You'll get an email or go to Car Design News, register or go to our YouTube channel. You can watch today's uh, webinar. And again, this is a series of webinars we're doing with Autodesk. So the next one will target a slightly different group, which is great. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all soon. And thank you again, Phil, Stephen, Barry. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.